we start to paint, we want to go ahead and set up our paint station. What we have pictured here is our paper that we've prepared by stretching and our palette that's opened up to the colors that we'll need and two cups of water. All right, the first thing we want to do is to get our paper ready. Now, this is a piece of cardboard, about 12 by 16, and uh, it's a little thicker piece of cardboard. And um, I'm going to take that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my paper, my 9 12 by 12 paper down. Now, I'm using the Canson XL paper, and you'll see there's two surfaces. One surface is uh, a little smoother and the other side is a little bumpier and I want to go ahead and use the bumpier side to paint on. So I'm going to do what is known as stretching your watercolor and I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to overlap just about mm, maybe a quarter of an inch Now this is a 140 pound paper, which is a good weight. It's pretty thick paper, and in general it's used most commonly. And I would recommend that you use that paper and not go anything lighter. They have some paper that's 90 pounds, but this paper, this 140 pound cold press paper, is your best painting surface to start on. For what our purpose is to begin watercolor, we're going to use the Canson XL watercolor paper. It's a great paper and it's very economical. Now I've had you tape this down onto cardboard because I figure everybody's got some cardboard around. However, if you can find what is known as this coroplast or signboard material, you can see it's, it's a corrugated plastic. It's used uh, on political signs and, and uh, signs, outdoor signage. And it's great because it's you can recycle it and it's waterproof and then you can go ahead and use that to tape down on. This is the paper that is taped down on a cardboard and this is paper that is taped down onto coroplast. Either one will work. This is a praying watercolor set and when you open it up, it's great. It has a little palette and it has the wells where the paints are. These are cake paints, so they're semi-moist. But for our lessons, I'm gonna have you pop out that second tray and I'm gonna have you set it aside there. And this brush is not a very good brush, so we're not even gonna bother with that brush. And then we're gonna pop out this green because I don't really like this green. You'll see why as we paint along. We can always make our green. So, paper towel. I like to put that under the bottom of my palette. And now, my two containers of water are very simple. They put there because this water is for cleaning my brush. This water is for adding to my paint. Now, this Tresemme spray bottle is great, but I, I've, I've listed some other styles of spray bottles. You don't want them to get too... You'll find when you get a larger painting going, you might want a larger spray bottle, but this is just great for this size painting. And the size paintings that we're going to work on are 9 by 12. So what happens if you run out of one of these colors? Now this pole palette will probably give you about 5 9 by 12 paintings, but eventually you're going to run out of colors. Thickest. Now you can buy these strips uh, from Prang, but you also can go ahead and fill these colors in with two watercolors. And I would then say I'm out of yellow. I would go and I would just go ahead and put some yellow in there. And there I would have uh, my yellow and then I would uh, add water to it. I wouldn't want to fill the whole well. I just need to fill a little dollop. It'll dry and it'll eventually get bigger. But I don't have to fill the whole well. I just need to put a little bit in for that painting that I'm doing. So I have a list of colors to replace the prang colors.
Now we'll talk about the brushes and we'll be ready to paint. Thank you.